evening, happy people. Welcome to our daily devotional, Scripture That Encourages You to Pray. It's Friday, end of our work week, beginning of a weekend. I pray you've had a blessed day. Um, for Kathy and I, we're getting ready to go on vacation, and so we are looking forward to this tremendously. Um, John, good evening. Good to see you. Um, we bought a week in a timeshare. It was at an auction, a fundraiser for Christian Friends of New Americans, and that's a ministry that my mom and dad volunteer at, and so it was just a real win-win, and so Kathy and I are going to be going down and uh, to Gulf Shores, Alabama, and we're just looking forward to getting away and, and just having some vacation time, so I pray that you've had a great week and that your weekend is awesome also. Uh, tonight we're going to look at Mark chapter 10, so I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles. We're going to look at Mark chapter 10, we're going to look at verses 46 to 52, and we're going to look at the importance of words and how words can build up walls, but also in Christ, words can tear down walls as well. It's, um, you know, very true that words can, can build walls, uh, unfortunately, sadly, Words uh, can be used to um, hurt and uh, to deceive and to lie. Um, words, words can do great damage. And it's, it's very true that words, words can build up walls. Words can build up walls between us and other people and even between us and God. But so great is Christ's grace and righteousness and his love towards us that in Christ and through Christ, words can tear down every one of these walls. When you think about our worship, you know, we begin with, uh, usually we begin with words of confession. We confess sins and we hear the words of forgiveness. That's walls being torn down between us and, and others, between us and God. You know, in the Lord's Supper, we hear Christ's words repeated. This is for the forgiveness of your sins. Again, these are words that tear down walls and words that build us up. And we hear the, the words of the blessing at the very end of the service. And again, we are uh, brought into a better relationship with God and we see that we walk closely with God. And so tonight we're going to look at Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. So I want to encourage you to get out your Bibles and, and to put your prayer caps on and to think about um, how words can be used to tear down walls and to restore relationships and how we are so blessed to hear the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer now. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. We thank you that we can call upon you in prayer. We thank you, Father, that you desire to be with us and that you desire for us to be your children. And we thank you, Father, that there is no wall between us and you that's so great that it cannot be torn down. And so, Father, open our hearts and open our minds as we look at Mark chapter 10 tonight so that we will be comforted and we will also be challenged and um, that our faith will grow and that we will be able to bear the fruit that you desire for us to bear. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name, according to your will and for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say, Amen. Before we get started, I want to say a special word of thanks to our social media team. You guys are a tremendous blessing. Thank you for all that you do to help people navigate the social media thing. And um, I, it's just, I just am so happy to be in ministry with you. So let's open up our Bibles to Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. Uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 46 says, And they, the they there is the disciples. The disciples uh, are with Jesus, and also there's a large crowd there. And they came to Jericho. And as he, he, that's Jesus, was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, then Bart, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. 
And as we look at this verse, a couple thoughts come to my heart that I want to share with you. First of all, of course, I'm reminded about Jericho being the site of the famous Old Testament battle. Uh, you can read about it in Joshua chapter 6. This is uh, really one of the first real tests of Joshua and his leadership of Israel. And God gives Joshua very specific instructions. And Joshua is re ready to receive these very specific instructions because just the previous chapter we read that, that Joshua had an encounter with the commander of the Lord's army. And that's a very interesting study in and of itself. And so then God gives Joshua very specific instructions that the, uh, every day, um, for six days, the uh, nation of Israel is to walk around the, the city of Jericho, and uh, the um, priests are going to be in the front and in the back. They've got to have their trumpets. And then when they do that, when they actually do that, then they blow the trumpets. And then on the seventh day, they go around seven times. And at the end of the, the, the seventh time, the, the priest will give a loud, long blast on the trumpets. And then the people will shout and the walls will come down. And so, uh, and then the victory will belong to the Israelites. And so Jesus is walking past Jericho, this site of this battle which God intervened in. And one in which the people of Israel let out this huge shout and the walls came tumbling down. And now here, outside of this uh, town, at this location, outside this city here, there is a man, uh, blind Bartimaeus, the beggar. He uh, has a great wall uh, in his life, the, the wall of blindness. And, um, and so then it's just so poetic, really, almost, that, that then it is blind Bartimaeus who lets out, the, lets out this big shout, and uh, Jesus responds, and then his walls come tumbling down as well. Um, you know, I think as we think about Jericho, you know, there's a great battle there. I'm also reminded, of course, as are you, that Jesus is on the way to a battle of his own. Uh, he is on his way to an even more famous battle than the battle of Jericho. Jesus is on his way to the battle, his battle in which he will become victorious ultimately over sin and death and Satan. As we look at this verse, we also see the great news that Jesus knows your name. Uh, Bartimaeus, there's really no reason for his name to be recorded or even his father's name to be recorded other than to just get, lend credence to the account um, to, to be able to verify it for the people in those days. Um, but I think it also then just speaks to the, the comforting news that you and I, that our names are in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that's such a blessing. Then verse 47, and when he heard, that's uh, blind Bartimaeus, when Bartimaeus heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out. He began to cry out and to say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Now, when the Israelites first went around Jericho, as near as we can tell, they just let out, you know, when it was time for them to shout, they just let out this, ah, you know, this sort of unintelligible shout, you know. Um, but now God is in their midst there at Jericho. And so Bartimaeus doesn't have to let out just a rah, an unintelligible shout. No, Bartimaeus cries out the name of Jesus. And, um, and that's a blessing that we can, we can speak to God by name. We, we, we can call upon Jesus, and, uh, and, and, and that's, that's just a great thing. We can talk to him. He calls us brother and sister, and that's, that's a wonderful thing. And, I, I, you know, I want to encourage you to, to be like Bartimaeus, you know, and I want to try to encourage myself, be more like Bartimaeus. Shout out the name of Jesus more in our daily lives. Why is that? Because shouting shows you're serious, it does. I mean, if you're at a sporting event, you know, um, back in the day, I was a big uh, Chicago Bears fan when I was in college. And uh, that was back when the, the Fridge and Walter Payton played for the Bears, you know. And, um, you know, when, when, you, when you watch a sporting event that you really care about, what do you do when, when your team scores a touchdown? You shout, you know. What do you do when the ref makes a bad call? You shout. Uh, shouting shows that you're serious. You're not just a, a, a bystander who really doesn't care about what's what's going on. If if you're a father um, and you're out in public and your child is lost, 
You don't, you don't ask quietly about your child. No, you shout, you shout. You want everybody to know, I'm looking for my kid. Why? Because, because my, your kid means that much to you. You know, if you're at an auction and you're, you're bidding on something, uh, you, you know, you're gonna raise your voice. You're gonna, you're gonna become emphatic because you care about what it is that you hope uh, to acquire. Shouting shows you're serious and it can be a very positive thing as it is here uh, in, in this case here in Mark chapter 10. Also, we, you know, as you look at verse 47, I, I'm just reminded that we need the mercy that only Jesus can give. You know, Bartimaeus could have shouted out a million different names, hypothetically. He could have shouted out a million different words, hypothetically. But we need the mercy that only Jesus can give. Verse 48. And many rebuked Bartimaeus. Not just a couple. Many. Many rebuked Bartimaeus, telling him to be silent. <laughs> but Bartimaeus this is my kind of guy. Bartima Bartimaeus cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. You know, as I look at this verse, I just have to confess to you, there are some church people who do some pretty bizarre things. It's just just hard to understand. It's, it's just hard to understand what happened there where, you know, we would say there were church people today, you know, that, that they would tell him to be quiet, you know, uh, to stop shouting out Jesus' name. Um, we should never, we should never, ever, ever tell somebody to stop calling out the name of Jesus. Not ever. Um, you know, blind Bartimaeus couldn't see who told him to be quiet, and he wasn't about to start listening to their advice either. <laughs> and I think there's a very practical sort of uh, lesson for you and I as believers. Sometimes you just need to close both your eyes and your ears to the negative voices around you, and just talk with Jesus. Amen? Amen. And then verse 49, And Jesus stopped and said, Call call Bartimaeus over here. And they called Bartimaeus, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. You know, it, I think it's also important to note here that obviously, obviously not all of the crowd had been telling Bartimaeus to be silent. Many were, you know, but not all. Um, and sometimes we exaggerate our difficulties. You know, sometimes we, we, we say, oh, you know, we, we start telling ourselves in our own minds that things are so much worse than what they are. The other day, I was uh, counseling a soldier who um, was going through a very difficult situation. And they were sharing with me uh, things that, that they said had happened and, and how they had reacted to it. And I was just trying to clarify. So I just, you know, asked a question. And then at that point, they confessed to me that, in fact, none of those things they had shared with me had, in fact, happened. These were just things they had role played in their mind. And uh, I think we got to be careful. We got to really be careful. Because if we role play things in our mind over and over and over again, it'll become almost as if it actually did happen. And that, that can be very unhealthy for us spiritually as well as socially um, with others. We gotta be careful that we don't exaggerate our difficulties. And I, I think as we look at verse 49 also, that we are encouraged that we should let these words be our words uh, to those who are in difficulty. Uh, what did, what did, the, what did the, uh, the, the nice followers of Jesus say to Bartimaeus? Take heart, get up, he is calling you. When you and I are, are with somebody who's going through a difficult time, those are great words to remember, guys. What they said to Bartimaeus, we can say to others who feel like they have great walls in their life, walls between other people, walls between themselves and God, take heart, get up, he is calling you. And Jesus says his two words to us today, call him, that's what Jesus says to his disciples, call him. The heart of Jesus beats for mission. That's what Jesus is saying to you and I today. Regarding those people that we know that, that have a wall separating them, separating themselves, uh, separating between them and God. Jesus is saying to you and I today, call them. Call them. Let them hear the good news. And then look at verse 50. Bartimaeus, at throwing off his cloak, cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. We also respond to Jesus with joy and a spring in our step. Why? Because we trust his calling us will bless us for time and for eternity. 
And our, our walk with Jesus is a, is a walk by faith. You know, when Bartimaeus throws off his cloak and springs up and comes to Jesus, he didn't have his eyesight restored yet. His eyesight's going to get restored. He does all of that purely in faith. Jesus is nearby. Jesus is not going to let him be hurt. And so I think this again reminds us that we should always strive to walk ever closer to the sound of Jesus' voice. And then verse 51, And Jesus said to Bartimaeus, What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus said to him, Rabbi, teacher, let me recover my sight. And so I would, I would ask you, what do you want Jesus to do today? What walls do you want torn down? There's no battle that's too great for Jesus. The battle of Jericho wasn't too great, nor was the battle that Jesus was on his way to outside the gates, uh, uh, the walls of Jerusalem. There's no battle, no wall too high. What do you want Jesus to do? And I want to encourage you, don't ask Jesus only for part of it or only partially believing. Ask Jesus for exactly what you want. Tell him all of it. Luther said that when we pray, I love this one little quote of his, when we pray, we should, we should give God to the, to the smallest detail what it is that we want from him. He's more than able. He's more than able. Tell him exactly what you want from him. And trust in his providing for your need. And then finally, verse 52. And Jesus says to Bartimaeus, go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately, Bartimaeus recovered his sight and followed him on the way. See, Bartimaeus didn't just take advantage of this site and, and go his own separate way. No, he followed Jesus in ministry. And Bartimaeus was blessed because of his faith. And we're reminded here that faith makes all things new. And that's really one of the biggest reasons why Jesus did miracles. Jesus did miracles because he, he cared for people. He wanted to help people. But one of the biggest reasons why Jesus did miracles, we should never lose sight of this, is that Jesus wanted to demonstrate, and he wants us to understand today, that the creation, which was perfect before the fall into sin, he has come to make into a new creation through his atoning, sacrificial death and victorious resurrection. Through his death and through his resurrection, then we become a new creation and we will one day inherit the fullness of this creation when we are in heaven with our Father, with our Savior, with the Holy Spirit, and with all those believers who have gone before us. The walls came tumbling down. They came tumbling down for Joshua and the Israelites. They came tumbling down for Bartimaeus. Jesus is in the business of tearing down walls. He wants to restore and to reconcile. And I pray that you are blessed with that, that you are comforted with that good news tonight. I've jotted down three prayer points I want to share with you because our devotion is scripture that encourages us to pray. And so as I thought about this passage, I thought, now, how might this encourage us to pray? And for me, these are three things I came up with. Uh, one, growth in courage, that we would pray for growth in courage to call on the name of Jesus, even in public. You know, uh, today I read the press release by the superintendent of the public school system for the city of North Chicago. And it's really quite something. The, the superintendent of the public school system of the city of North Chicago in his press release says that he wants to thank Pastor Buckman and Faith Lutheran Church for reaching out to the public school system to help to raise money for their uh, foundation that provides funds for high school graduates to go to the Community College of Lake County. And he mentions Faith Lutheran Church twice. And, um, and we are going to be um, so blessed as a congregation to serve these wonderful families in this wonderful school district uh, that neighbor us. 
end. It is, it is a powerful, powerful thing to see and to hear the name of Jesus being spoken publicly. So, uh, I, but I think we want to pray for growth to have even more courage to call on the name of Jesus in public. Uh, second prayer point, trying to walk closer to the sound of Jesus, to listen for that still, small, quiet voice. And just to try to, to come closer and closer to that voice. And then thirdly, third prayer point, thankfulness. Thankfulness for being a new creation through Christ. Even as Bartimaeus began to experience that in part uh, with the restoration of his sight, so also we will experience that in full one day soon and very soon. I went through um, the textual guide for our Lutheran hymns to see if there were any hymns in our hymn book from that, that referenced Joshua chapter 6 specifically. And I wish I could tell you that there are, but there aren't. But, be that as it may, have a wonderful melody in your heart and the words of Mark chapter 10 upon your tongue. And um, let's go in peace and let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good night.